Barracuda Bunch. How are you all doing today? Uh-huh. 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 Good to hear. I too had a delicious breakfast as well. So good morning. Uh, my name is Jen and joining me in the studio is James who's showing us this lovely webcam that we have back behind us. This is actually a new one, uh, which is really cool. It focuses on a predatory animal. So animals that like to eat coral actually. So that's one of the, the cool things about this new exhibit. But then also joining me is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. She is the one. She's waving back and taking in all those wonderful questions and comments that you might have if you go on ahead and text us down below at 562-286-1838. And so if you have any questions, anything that you were interested in sharing, we would love to hear from you. Now, if you're not watching this live, you can always go on ahead and email us down below at live at lbaop.org. But Barracuda Bunch, if we go on ahead and we think about yesterday, you may have crafted a critter, right? Hopefully you had a good time with that. And today we are going to be finishing up our alphabet. Now there are many letters in the alphabet, 26-ish, I think thereabouts. And so we are gonna be focusing on the very last three. We're getting through it, so it's really exciting. Can you think of the last three letters of the alphabet? Hmm. If you're like me, you may have to start from the beginning, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and work your way through. But I have been training and focusing for these last three letters. So with that, let's go on ahead and let's start with X right here. Yep, if you were thinking X, you've got it, right? So if we pronounce the word X, it goes kind of, right? Kind of weird letter, X. Very, very pretty though. I like the shape of it. But, do you want to do an X with me? Very nice. Now we are going to figure out an animal that starts with the letter X. Hmm. Can you think of any animals in the ocean that start with an X? We'd love to hear from you, Barracuda Bunchers, if you happen to know an animal that starts with an X. I originally thought of like a ray, but then I thought x-ray, but there's no such thing in the ocean like an x-ray. That's more of like if you sprain a bone, right? Or if you break a bone, you may need to go get an x-ray so the doctors can see into your, into your body to see if that bone is broken or if, uh, how, you're, how you're doing. So that's not an ocean animal. Huh. Let's see. I can think of a cartoon that starts with an x where mutants have superpowers, but that doesn't quite work either because they're not in the ocean. Hmm. Can you think of any? Hmm. Well, I thought of one and maybe you thought of the exact same one. James, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Awesome. Let's go on ahead and share that word with everyone. It is, are you ready? Oh my, you got a sneak peek. Zoxanthellae! What you thought, right? Maybe not, but that's okay because that's a huge word. So let's first spell it all together. It's good because it gives us practice with a lot of letters. All right, here we go. X, O, O, X, A, N. We're all halfway there. T, H, E, L, L. I'm gonna have to step off the screen here. A, E. Now, it's a very long word, so let's clap it out together, okay? Zo, zan, the, li. Wanna try it with me? Zo, zan, the, li. Now, whisper it. Zo, zan, the, li. Zo, zan, the, li. Nice job, friends, right? So we are going to be learning about this really long word, Zoxanthellae. Remember that z sound from that X, right? Zoxanthellae. Awesome. All right. Now let's go on ahead and see if we can see a picture of what these zoxanthellae look like. Are you excited? Because I am. Um, James, uh, is this right? I mean, this looks like coral right here. Where's the zoxanthellae? He's pointing into the coral, right? 
That's right. These those ant valley live inside the coral right here. Uh-huh. It's really hard to see, but they're what gives the coral their color. Now, what color do you see here? Hmm. I see yellow. I see a big yellow circle or maybe like an oval, right? And so here we have all of these zoosanthellae. They're really teeny tiny, very small, but they are a type of algae. So they're related to plants. They do the same thing that plants do. Now, if we think about what plants do, plants are what color? Green, right? One of my favorite colors. And that green, all those green leaves, right, help them to capture the sun. And they eat, they get the energy from the sun. Yum, 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 yum. And then they turn all of that sun energy into delicious sugar that helps them to live. Well, these algae, these zooxanthellae inside of our brain coral here, they kind of do the same thing. The ocean water is very clear, right? Because we can see all the way back to those rocks all the way over there. And the same on the other side. And so this clear water brings lots of sunlight into the ocean. And it helps these zooxanthellae, these little algae inside of this coral, to be able to get all that sunlight, just like how we see here in our live coral exhibit. And all of these different corals for all the colors are all the different colors of that zooxanthellae. And they're just drinking up all that sun. Yum, 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 yum. And they are making all these sugar. Now, they make so much sugar that there is enough for them. And there's also some extra that they like to share with the coral. And so this way, it's a nice little friendship between the algae and the coral that they live together. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I'm a big fan. Hmm. Now I wonder if maybe we could zoom in onto some algae or into some coral to be able to see what some of that zooxanthellae looks like. But here, in the meantime, what colors do you see? Mm, I see a lot of blue. Feel free to text in any colors that you might see, Barracuda Bunchers. Oh, I see those fish. They're kind of yellow in color, aren't they? And then there's some blue fish. Do you see these coral? They almost look pink, right? And I think I see some orange right back up here too. So our corals have lots of different colors all thanks to that zooxanthellae or algae that we can find in them. Ah, now here's a real close-up of some of that algae. Now this is a little bit different kind that we have right here, but all of this inside are going to be kind of the same colors as what we're seeing inside of our algae. Oh, zooxanthellae, you're so wonderful. All right, friends, so we spent a good amount of time on X. Let's see if we can talk a little bit about the next letter. Can you think about what that next letter will be? Hmm. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, Y. Y. Yep. So we are going to now focus on the letter Y that we have right here. What sound does a Y make? I don't hear it say anything, but I think we know what sound the Y makes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's practice it together. Yeah. Right? One more time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. That's that Y sound. So, can you think of any animals that l that start with the, with the letter Y? Hmm. Yeah. Ye yellow? Aha! Yellow! That is a color, but some animals and sponges, another kind of creature, can sometimes be described by their actual letter. So why can describe that? So here we can see a fish that has bright yellow, right? So it's pretty amazing how yellow, it's almost neon yellow, super bright, right? This fish right here. Now, this fish isn't called a yellow fish, even though it is yellow. It is called an oval fish. I can't remember the exact name. Ah, oval angel fish, I think is what it is. So here we have our oval angel fish. I almost prefer it calling it the yellow fish, right? Or yellow highlighter fish. Or maybe neon yellow fish. Yeah, neon yellow fish. 
Maybe next time. If I discover a neon yellow fish, that's what I will call it. But here we have an oval because of the shape that we see here, right? It's not a perfect circle. It's kind of smushed a little bit, right? And so we have our smushed circle. Looks like it got smushed right here, right? So we went, eh, and we smushed it. And here we have our oval-shaped uh, uh, butterfly angelfish that we have right here. Awesome. All right. Now, there are other animals like yellowfin tuna. That's another, uh, another possible answer, right? Because there's a lot of yellowfish in the ocean. Now, let's go on ahead and see if we can spell out that yellowfin tuna. Hmm. Let's see. Starts with an Y. E. L. L. O. W. F. I. N. T. U. N. A. Yellow fin tuna. So if we're thinking about yellow fin tuna, well, what part on that tuna do you think is yellow? Do you think it's all yellow like our other yellow neon fish or highlighter fish? Hmm. Yellow fin tuna. Well, let's see if we can figure out what part of it might be yellow. Huh. I wonder if it's in its name. Do you think maybe it might have yellow fins? Hmm. Feel free to text in your answers, Barracuda Bunchers. I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to step out of the screen. What do you notice? Do they have yellow fins? They sure do, right? So all of these fins right here, they're all yellow. Now, we noticed that there was an oval on our, our, um, our angelfish or our butterfly fish that we saw earlier. But what shapes do you notice on this? yellow fish on all these tails. Hmm. If you're thinking triangles, yeah, there's triangles everywhere. Now, some of them are even super skinny triangles, like this one right here, right? But these have tons and tons of triangles. And they even have like a little yellow streak that goes on the very side. Now, these tuna are very, 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 very fast. And so we actually also eat these tuna, too. They're found on the Atlantic coast, on our coast, the Pacific coast here off of Long Beach. And they're also sometimes found in the, I think, Indian Ocean, too. So they're found everywhere. But a lot of times, if you are fishing for them, you might get them off the East Coast. Now, they are such fast fish. Any guesses how you might catch these fish? Hmm. I have an idea. If you're thinking maybe by a fishing pole, you got it. Now mine's really small just because I made this for this morning, right? But if we were fishing for these animals, it would be much bigger, right? And so here I have a little snack that maybe I'm fishing for a hungry carry out there who might go on ahead and give this delicious snack too, right? But they would use one fishing pole and there would be fishing line right here, kind of like a, a plastic string and on the edge, they wouldn't have candy. Instead, they might have like a squid or another kind of smaller fish, what they call bait fish, that they might use to then be able to bring in these fish. So it's pretty incredible. These fish can be really, really, really big. All right, friends. Now, we talked about yellow fin tuna, but do you think they're the only yellow animals in the ocean? I think not. I bet that there's other fun yellow animals in the ocean. Let's see if we can see another one. Ah, yes, here we go. Now this one, my friends, where do you see the yellow? Everywhere, right? I see it here, I see it here, 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 and here, and more here, and here, and there. So there is yellow everywhere. But this fish right here is called a copper banded butterfly fish long name, huh? But this fish has lots of what they like to call copper, which is just kind of like a different type of yellow, because there's lots of different kinds of yellow out there, just like how there's lots of different colors of blue, or lots of different colors of red, or orange, right? There's lots of different kinds of yellow. So this is our copper banded butterfly fish. Yeah, you can see all these little bands right here going straight down. 
Now, do you see, I'll step out again real quick, do you see any kind of other shapes on it? Oh, I see a few. Do you, are you seeing what I'm seeing, Barracuda Bunch? If you're saying circle, yeah, right? So we have a circle right here for an eye. I haven't seen another oval. Yep, right here, right? We have another oval. And then, did you see the triangle? Yeah, right here on its fin, we have a triangle right there. So it's pretty neat to be able to see so many shapes on another yellow fish. All right, let's see if maybe there's one more yellow fish. Hmm, oh my goodness, so bright. All of these yellow friends. I'm gonna step out real quick. Isn't that neat? There's so many of them. Ah! Oh, I'm going to be safe. Silly me. Now, these are blue striped snapper. I see more yellow than blue, but there's definitely a lot of blue on here. Do you see the blue stripes on them? They almost look like pajama stripes to me. Yeah, so they almost have an almost an all yellow body with those really cool light blue stripes. So another one very much yellow, but there's a lot of blue on there too. All right, so we've covered X with our zoxanthellae with that z sound. We've done Y with all of our yellow fish friends, right? Um, and so that made a Y kind of sound. What's our very last letter? Hmm, <gasps> Z, of course. How could we ever forget about Z? That makes that zzz kind of sound. Want to do it with me? Zzz, right? Now, sometimes I think when I'm sleeping, I'm making zzz noises. Or maybe I'm a bee. I'm making zzz. And that's, that's a buzzing all around, right? Now, if we think about ocean animals, any guesses of things that start with a Z, Barracuda Bunchers? I know, it's kind of tricky, right? Like, there's, we're getting to the pretty hard part of the alphabet. It's not like our A's and our B's and our C's and our D's. There's lots of different animals of those. It does get tricky. Hmm. Any guesses, friends? Feel free to text them on in. We'd love to hear from you. Hmm. Or maybe even if you have a favorite yellow fish that you want to share, or maybe your favorite coral animal that you want to share with us, or maybe your favorite thing that starts with a Z may not even be in the ocean. Maybe it's a zebra. Maybe it's, oh my goodness, it's hard to see. Say, maybe it's a zebra shark. Ta-da! And this is our Z animal for today. Let's go on ahead and spell that out together. Z, E, B, R, A, S, H, A, R, K. Zebra shark. Yeah, so today we are going to be talking a little bit about zebra sharks. Now, when you think about a zebra, what comes to mind? What do you picture? Hmm, I picture black, I picture white, I almost picture kind of like a, a horse. Hmm, anything else that comes to mind when you think about zebra? dots? I was thinking stripes. Now this is our zebra shark right here and it definitely does have polka dots. Kind of has some little stripey patterns right here but believe it or not zebra sharks are named zebra sharks because when they are born and they are a small pup, yep that's what they call them when they're babies, pups, they are more striped and then as they get older the stripes go away Goodbye, stripes, and hello to lots and lots of polka dots that we have right here. Hmm, now, what colors do you notice on our shark? Hmm, well, I see brown. I see black. Yep, two colors on our shark right here. And what about shapes? What shapes do you see? 
Hmm. I see a circle, or its little eye right here, and I kind of see like a triangle right here, and another triangle up here, and another slanty triangle right over here too. Huh. Now, this shark looks a little bit different than our usual sharks. Look at that long fin that our zebra shark has on there. Hmm. Why do you think that zebra shark has such a long fin? A little tail fin back there. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can go on ahead and look at our Shark Lagoon webcam to be able to get a better idea of maybe how our zebra shark swims or maybe if it's just kind of hanging out. Let's go on ahead and find out. And friends, this shark, um, shark Lagoon webcam is available to view at any time. So if you're interested in checking it out, would highly recommend. It's good to, you know, just put on the TV maybe and eat some popcorn and have a good time, right? And so that's maybe one of my favorite things I like to do. Uh, but, you know, it's a really cool way to view a lot of different sharks. <gasps> oh, and here's a great view of our shark, our zebra shark. I'm going to move out of the way so we can watch it swim. Oh, now it's swimmed out of view, but I'm sure it'll come back. Oh, watch it go. What, what do you think? What do you see it's tail fin doing? Hmm. Well, I definitely saw it move, right? Kind of if we take our two hands and we put them together and we put it up like that, we can pretend we are zebra sharks as we move along, right? And so that's how zebra sharks swim. They use that back tail fin to just whoosh right on through. You want to practice that with me again? There you go. Now you're a zebra shark. Awesome job, friends. Now, do all other sharks also use their back fin or their tail fin to move? What do we notice with some of these reef sharks? Hmm. Well, I think I'm seeing them also use their back tail fin, right? As they use to move around. Ah! Here's our zebra shark again. We get another great view. Oh, hello. So beautiful. Now, what about those side fins? What did you notice those were doing? Were those flapping around to help our zebra shark move? Oh, that was a speedy shark. I guess that would start with S, speedy. <laughs> That's not the actual type, though. That's more of a reef shark. Starts with an R. But if we think about it, what do you notice the fins, the sharks doing with their side fins? Hmm, I'll step out again for a second. We can just watch them for a little bit. Maybe this is a way, nice way to start your mornings. Have a little breakfast, watch some sharks. That sounds nice too. Or maybe a snack time activity where you can have some popsicles because it's so hot out here. Ah, I feel refreshed already. Right? So you may have noticed, oh, it looks like our zebra shark went ahead and decided to take a nap. We talked about the afternoon, and that's okay too. But our sharks, right, are using these side fins, these pectoral fins, to be able to steer. Oh, there it is, right, to help it to be able to move around. So it's neat to be able to see them use all their different fins. Their tail fin back there to be able to swim, and their side fins for them to be able to move around, like we see right there with one of our other sharks too. Wow, friends, that's so incredible, right? Getting a chance to see all these really neat sharks within our shark lagoon. Now, once again, it starts with an S, but our zebra shark definitely starts with a Z. Now, these other sharks and their fins, are they the same as our zebra shark? Hmm. They seem to look a little bit more triangly, right? Our, our shark fins are kind of more like this shape. Or I guess I should maybe say like this shape, right? They're basically two triangles that are with each other and that kind of help them to move. But our zebra shark that we see that's coming up right now, right? Does it have that same kind of fin? Hmm, oh, there it goes, right? It has, once again, almost looks like a hockey stick where it kind of goes up at the end and it moves around. Now, why do you think it might have more of a tail that flips up instead of a normal kind of triangle tail like this? Hmm. Well, 
If I move out of the way again, we might be able to see it. Nope, it just wants to keep swimming. And that's okay too. But normally these, uh, these sharks will basically sit on the ground. We have one almost sitting on the ground right here, but they like to rest on the ground. So their fin being pointed upwards instead of down makes it really nice and easy and comfortable for our sharks right here to be able to just lay flat on the ground. Now, what is really neat about these animals, especially for these sharks, is that they don't need to keep on swimming to be breathing. They have a little special hole right behind their eye, right here. And if you get to watch them in real life, that little hole looks like it's opening and closing all the time. And it's almost like it's like winking at you, you know? And so that little hole behind the eye basically brings in water and goes through their little gills right here the part that helps them to breathe. And so it's a really neat way for these animals to just lay on the ground and relax while that little hole does all the pumping that the shark needs to get that water through all of the gills of our shark right there. All right, Barracuda Bunch. So if we go on ahead and we review all of our letters so far that we covered today. Oh, here's a great picture, thank you, of one of our sharks laying on the ground right here. Right, so you can see its tail just flops really nicely into the sand and it is just lounging right there. Thank you, James, for finding that for us. Pretty cool stuff to be able to see. All right, friends. So now we've had a chance to cover the three last letters of our alphabet. X, Z, Y, yeah, and Z, Z. So X and Z sound very similar, don't they? Yeah. But that's okay. They have very different shapes to them when you write them out as a letter. Now, talking about writing, that's what you get a chance to do today for our special activity um, that you can go and check out online, Barracuda Bunch. We have a sheet where you can practice writing your name and also maybe writing down some of the names of the favorite animals that you might have seen here on our episode for today. Now, tomorrow, there's even more excitement. Tomorrow, we're going to be getting a chance to move and groove. So we're gonna be exercising. So it's very important for you to maybe be dressed in clothes that you can move around with and get really excited because maybe we'll be moving like that zebra shark, right? With its tail thin, or maybe we're going you know, side to side like that zebra shark, right? Or maybe we might get a chance to be like a penguin, right? waddle around. There's so many different animals that we can move like and I'm really excited that you all will be tuning in tomorrow for that. But don't worry, we have a lot more episodes that are coming up later on today. So if you want to chime in and check out another cool camp, feel free to do so. In the meantime, Barracuda Bunch, we'll catch you back up with you tomorrow. Bye everyone. <laughs>